Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. How exciting, right? We have 8 at the base and z at the guitar, wait a minute, I mean the exponent, and then we're supposed to solve for z. This is fun because the right hand side is not real, right? And this channel is all about complex numbers, so that makes sense. So we're going to start by setting 8 to the power z to an exponential, like we're going to turn this into an exponential. In other words, we're going to use Euler's number e at the base. And there's a rule. If you have some complex number to another complex number, which is complex exponentiation, you can express or write it as e to the power z ln w. And isn't that fun? And obviously, what is ln w? ln w is just another complex number because w is a complex number. It can be written as ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. Argument is the angle ln of absolute value of w. Absolute value is the modulus, the distance from zero. Make sense? Put it all together, you got a formula. Nice. So let's start by turning a to the z into an exponential. So 8 to the z can be written as e to the power z ln 8. Just remember that ln is going to act on the base and this is just going to be in the front because of the properties of logarithms. Great. Now what about the right hand side? We have negative 1 plus root 3i. You can definitely, definitely plot this in the complex plane which is called argon plane, right? Just a fancy name for the coordinate system. This is real, this is imaginary, so on and so forth. Kind of like a two-dimensional number or a point in the coordinate plane. Negative 1 is going to appear somewhere here. Who knows? And then root 3 is going to be greater than in absolute value. So it's kind of like 1.7-ish maybe. Something like that. I don't know. But that's root 3i. Remember, you're on the imaginary axis. And then if you put those two coordinates together, you got the number. And then you can definitely connect that to the origin to find... I'm going to try to make a straight line. Thank you, notability. And then this is going to define where our number. And we can talk about the argument, which is also known as theta. Okay? So two things, r and theta. r is 2 from Pythagorean theorem. Remember, this is 1. This is root 3. That's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Awesome. That tells us that theta is 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians. Beautiful. We got the radians and we got the r. Let's put it together. So negative 1 plus root 3i is going to be written as r e to the i theta. So it's going to become 2 times e to the power i times 2 pi over 3. Obviously you could arrive at the same solution if you just consider that okay the absolute value of, is 2. If I take it out I'm going to get that. And inside, I'm supposed to have cosine theta and sine theta. And then you can go from there, draw unit circle, so on and so forth. It depends on uh, you totally, like you get to decide what you want to do, right? So let's go ahead and put it all together. We have e to the power z ln 8 on the left hand side. And 2 times e to the power i times 2 pi over 3 on the right hand side. Awesome. If you ln natural log both sides or just log both sides, a lot of people call it log. And now you're going to get this in the front, z ln 8. And then you're going to get the log of 2, which I write as ln 2, plus this one because ln e is 1. It's going to be i times 2 pi over 3. And doesn't this look like a plus ib? But wait a minute, that kind of looks backwards. No, it's not really. But some people write it that way. a plus pi which is the name of this channel, of course, right? That's, I like it better. Anyway, so this is my number, but wait a minute, I have an ln8, so what am I supposed to do with that? Divide, right? So we kind of have to divide everything by ln8, and if I do, I get something like this, 2 pi over 3 divided by ln8 is just going to be 2 pi over 3 ln8. And now, of course, don't forget to multiply by i, then you're going to lose the whole imaginary part. And now this is our number, but wait a minute, are we supposed to have infinitely many solutions, right? Where did we go wrong? So here's the thing, we didn't go wrong, but we kind of missed something major. That was the multiples of 2 pi, because this is just the principal argument, but you can always add 
multiples of 2 pi, which is known as 2 pi n. And that's just going to add to this number and then to this number. So you kind of write it as 2 pi n. And then that's, of course, going to bring an extra something to the equation, right? So let's go ahead and fix that real quick because it's only going to give us the principal value. And from here, I'm going to be getting, by the way, you could probably make a common denominator like 2 pi plus 6 pi n over 3 because you're going to divide it by ln 8. And that's just going to be 2 pi plus 6 pi n divided by 3 ln 8. And then don't forget to multiply by i. Awesome. Now, this is my number in general form. n is an integer, right? Could be positive or negative or even 0. And we'll talk about so, uh, some of the special cases. But this should give you the solution. But wait a minute. What does that look like? And does that really satisfy the original equation? We'll talk about it. Okay, let's go ahead and see how we can do this. First of all, ln 8 can be written as uh, ln 2 cubed, which can be written as 3 ln 2 by properties of logarithms. And this guy here can be simplified a little bit, uh, maybe factored. I can kind of write it as, uh, maybe take out a 2 pi. Is that going to work? I don't know. 2 pi and then try 1 plus 3. Okay, something like that. 1 mod mu, mu, 3, like a number like 4, multiply by 2 pi but it's still going to be a multiples of 2 pi. But anyways, so something like this. And now, obviously, here's the thing. Um, if n is equal to, since n is an integer, uh, if n is equal to 1 and then n is equal to 2, you're going to miss some of the multiples. So that's why, anyways, no big deal. So this is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with 1 third. Awesome. Now let's just look at the special scenario where n is equal to 0. That's just going to give me 2 pi over 3 ln 8 multiplied by i. So it's my a plus bi, right? Cool. Now, this is just one of the solutions, right? But the fun part is there's a real part which is 1 third. You know where that comes from? Here's what's going on. This 8 is actually 2 to the power of 3. Right? So we kind of have that 2 to the power 3z on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we have 2 times something. Make sense? Remember the complex part? Right? 2 is the modulus. So here, if we didn't have anything here, if this was 1, you would get 3z equals 1 and z equals 1 third, would just be one of the solutions. That's why we have this real part. But this part is not real. So this is not a solution. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. I just want to give you a quick perspective on this stuff. All right, cool. So you can definitely plug it in. I'm not going to do it because you can do it, right? Uh, and I don't know if I have the results from Wolfram Alpha. I probably do, and yes. Wolfram Alpha only gives us log of something. Come on, you can do better than that. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.